Okay, so the first thing I want to do is talk about when somebody comes and says, okay, you, obviously there's going to be different styles of haircuts. There's people that are going to get what is called a comb over, right? We all know what a comb over is. There's two types of styles that are comb over. One is called a natural comb over and one is called with the part. Those two are cut, are cut completely different one from the other. The biggest difference is obviously one has a part and you have to be able to work with that. Let's say this person comes in and he wants to get a part. It's very important for me to identify where the part is going to be at to make sure that the sections that I'm working with are going to stay specific to that haircut, right? Um, like yesterday, I was talking to some people and I was telling them, when you guys are doing a scissor cut, you got to remember that for the most part, this middle section is going to be at horizontal cutting, right? So the finger placement is going to be horizontal. Everything's going to come out at a 90. Anytime you do a haircut with scissors, 90% of the time, it's going to be a 90 degree haircut. That means that everything is going to be elevated at 90 degrees, okay? If you're doing this side, this is a 90 degree, okay? This is not a 90 degree. This is 90 degree, this is 90 degree, this is 90 degree, this is 90 degree, okay? I always tell people a comb is really useful if for some reason you say you get lost and you don't understand like, oh, where's my 90? Most of the time you can use the shape of the comb to kind of give you where your 90 is at, right? So if I want to know where my, where my 90 here would be, I put my comb against the scalp and that's my 90, okay? This is my 90, this is my 90, this is my 90, okay? So almost all the time that you're gonna do a haircut, you're gonna cut it at a 90 degree angle elevation from the scalp, okay? There's two angles that you gotta worry about, the 90 degree angle and the placement of your fingers, the angle that you have your fingers. Here on the top, I'm gonna be cutting at a uh, horizontal uh, elevation, you could say, right? Or posture or you know whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna be cutting this way, horizontally. Once I get to the section on the side, I'm gonna go at a 45. Once I get to the section on the side side, I'm gonna go at a 90, okay? So my finger placement is gonna be horizontal, zero, 45, 90. The hair is always gonna be at 90 no matter what I'm doing, okay? Zero, 45, 90. That's if I'm connecting this to the middle, if I'm connecting this to the middle. Okay. If I'm doing, let's say somebody has a slick hair back, they do the hair to the back. For example, kind of like Gus, right? With him, I'm gonna do the same thing. Zero, 45, 90. Zero, 45, 90. Because I need both sides to connect. If I'm doing a haircut, for example, like mine, that it's a natural comb over, I don't have a part, I'm gonna do the same thing. Zero, 45, 90. Zero, 45, 90. Why? Because even though I'm doing a comb over, it's a natural comb over. I don't want this hair to come in and create a layer because I'm separating it. I want this to blend in naturally to the middle and get pushed to the side, okay? Now, if this person had a part, that's the only one that it would change. If you're gonna create a part, let's say I'm working with this one and the person has a part. Let me wet the hair a little bit so I can control it a little bit more. Let's say this person comes in and we know that we're gonna be doing a part, right? When a person has a part and they're gonna wanna be keeping the part, let's say whether you make the line or they just like having that part and they don't want the line, it doesn't matter. The way that's gonna change is that now we're gonna go at zero, zero. So it's, the middle's gonna be zero. This side's gonna be 45 and then 90 because we're connecting this side to the side. Here, because we have a part, we need and all the hair that's gonna be on this side of the lines to be long, and we need all of this side to be shorter, right? So there's gonna be a disconnection from these two sides. That means that the hair here, I'm gonna stay at cutting at zero, and I'm gonna leave this very long. Why? Because I need the length here and the weight to be able to push over and get that slick come over to come to the other side. If I come in with the 45, and then I have my part, that little hair is gonna wanna spike up because now I went shorter and it doesn't have the weight or the length 
to be able to come over to the other side, okay? So here we stay at zero, here we stay at zero to keep the length, and here we go at a 45 and then a 90, because this side we are connecting, okay? So that's gonna be kind of like where we're at. Always when we're gonna start off cutting the hair, we need to create what is called a guide. Now there's two ways of people doing that. Some people like to what is called freestyle it, means that what they do is they pick up the first guide and they cut and then they use that guide and they push it back and they cut. They use that guide and they push it back and they cut, right? That works. But what's gonna happen with the hair as I'm pushing the guide back? There's gonna be a lot of it. It's gonna change lengths. It's gonna change length, right? Because I'm over directing the hair from the front to the back, right? So is it gonna get longer or shorter? No, it's going to get shorter, right? Because I'm going to push it and I'm going to pull it and I'm going to pull it. So I'm leaving the hair in the front a lot longer than I'm leaving the hair in the back, right? I'm pulling that guy to the back and I'm using that as my section. If you want to get more of an accurate cutting, you need to do what is called your mohawk guide, okay? The mohawk guide means that we're going to start off in this middle section and we're going to use this middle section to create your guide. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what that means. You guys gotta remember also, when you're cutting hair, especially when you're doing a scissor cut, it's really important that the hair is either all wet or all dry. Obviously, we wanna keep it as moist as possible because it's gonna be a lot easier to control it. When you're doing dry cutting, I mean, honestly, I hardly ever see any barber doing dry cutting. For the most part, all barbers always use the hair when it's wet because it's going to be so much easier to control the hair. <laughs> um, like Sonia was saying, I think last time she was using it mostly because at the end, like even like for example, let's say the haircut I'm going to do now, right? I'm going to do the full haircut. Once I dry it up, I'm going to come back and do a little bit of dry cutting and get the details. Because remember, the hair, what happens when it's wet? It just stretches, right? The hair stretches up to what? Who remembers that? 10%. 10%. Who remembers that? Sonia, how much does the hair stretch? I don't know how much it stretches. <laughs> about half an inch. Yes. Okay. So hair stretches about half an inch average. Right? That's the average amount of hair stretches when it's wet. Half an inch is a good amount. Yeah. If the hair is Let's say you cut some of the hair while it's wet and you cut some of the hair while it's dry, that's a half an inch difference. And you might not see it when it's wet because it's all clumping in together and it's kind of mixed in, but once it dries, you're gonna see those layers of cutting, okay? So that's what I would use, I would, that, that's when I would do a little bit of dry cutting. Once I'm done with my haircut and I don't wanna wet it again and mix it up again, I would come in with my dry hair and just kind of blend it in and connect it, you know? Just detail it more than anything. Okay, because it is going to look a big difference. All right. All right. So we're going to be doing what is called your mohawk guide. And this is the way I start every haircut when I do a scissor cut, uh, when I do a comb over, when I do whatever type of haircutting that I'm doing. This is the way I always started. This is the way I've been started. This is the way I do it still now. Okay. We're going to start off with what is called your mohawk guide. Okay. So we're going to get that mid section, which is going to be right in the middle. And we're going to pull up. A mohawk. We're gonna start off in the middle, right? When I'm when I'm gonna cut the hair, I like to use a comb like this. Why? Because it creates tension on this side, and if I need to untangle, I use this side. So I like. You gotta remember when you're doing scissor cutting, tension is a big factor. You have to make sure that you create tension on every time that you're cutting. Okay. So here I'm gonna use a section that's a little bit more tighter to create that section. We're gonna come in and we're gonna cut, right? My comb is gonna go through in my hand, right? The comb is always gonna stay in your hand. You gotta get, stop. I see people still right now that what they do is they go like this and then they put the comb back in their station and then they come back and cut it and then they pick up their comb. You gotta, you gotta get used to that. You gotta get used to that rotation. You know, your comb never leaves your hands while you're, while you're doing scissor cutting. I pick up my section, my comb comes back here, I cut, right i try not to go so much past my second knuckle okay i'm not gonna let this go because this is my starting guide i need this guy to be able to follow it 
So before I drop this, I'm gonna get my comb again and I'm gonna pick up another section behind it. Okay, and I see my guide here. Now, this is really important for you guys to always see it. I always tell people, you gotta make sure that the guide is on top of your fingers where you're gonna be able to follow it. If you put it in a little bit too deep and you're not gonna see it, and you're barely looking at it, what's gonna happen to your next section? Longer. It's gonna get longer because you're not gonna dig in there to follow the guide. So you need to make sure that your guide is visible and that you're gonna be to easily follow it through. Okay, we're gonna get the next section and we're gonna keep doing this all the way to the back. I see my section here and I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna follow the back and I'm gonna do it all the way to the back. If I don't see my guide, I'm not gonna cut, okay? Once I'm done with this whole section in the middle, this whole section became my guide now. It doesn't matter what you do, where you get happen, how you get lost, it doesn't matter if you combed it back, well, I let it go. If I get lost, I can always come back to that mid section and look for what is called your U shape. That's your guide. Anytime you pick up the hair in the middle, anywhere in the middle, because you created what is called the Mohawk guide, you're gonna be able to pick it up and see your guide right away. Okay? You guys see that, right? Everybody sees that U shape. Mm -hmm. That mid section, that's your guide. That's what's gonna be able to lead you throughout the entire haircut. And again, that's gonna happen anywhere. You pick it up from the front, that's your guide. You pick it up in the middle of the hair, that's your guide. You pick it up in the back of the hair, that's your guide, the U shape, you know? So it's almost impossible for you to get lost if you're creating that midsection guide. That's why it's so important. That's why I like doing that one more than the one that you're pulling back. Because when you're pulling back, if you get lost on that guide, now you gotta start again from the front. Now you gotta follow to the front and you gotta look for that guide again. And if you didn't create that guide nice and sharp or you're barely trimming the hair, you're lost. You know, that's, it's much easier to lose your guide when you're just pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. It's so much easier to be able to come back to your guide when you can create your, your U shape and pick it up anywhere and have your guide right away. Okay, so what am I gonna do with that guy now? You can go to the right or the left. I gotta do one more step. How did I create my guy? What did I do? Mohawk. I created a mohawk, right? That means that what? Is that means does that mean that that whole section is even? No. No. What does that mean? You gotta go inside. Cross it. You gotta cross it. You gotta go from the side. What do I have to do with that? Forty-five. You lift the glue a little bit. You gotta go to the side, right? Not yet. What do I gotta do with that? Is my guide gonna be a U? No, you gotta take the U. What does that mean then? You gotta even it out. I gotta even out that U, right? I gotta make that U straight. I'm not gonna leave the haircut with a U. You know? That U is just your guide, that's just your starting guide. That's the one that's gonna lead you to everything else. But that you has to become flat, right? And what did I say that I was gonna do in that middle section? What angle? Zero, right? So we're gonna get that U and we're gonna even it out. So we can make that whole section that we created of a Mohawk as an even section, right? Because we're not keeping the U, the U is just your guide to get started, all right? So now I gotta come back to the front, pick up my U shape, and make that whole section even, okay? Because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm extending that middle section to a bigger section now, okay? Yes, because you gotta remember, a mohawk means that I'm extending the hair from here this way, right? So when I open it up, it's gonna be longer here, longer here, shorter in the middle. So I need to even it out, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in and get my U shape and even it out. Get my U shape and even it out. I'm gonna do that all the way to the back. Right here, that's my U shape. I'm gonna even it out, okay? Now I have that whole middle section flat 
even and it's a big guide, right? Now I can use that guide to move over to the sides, okay? Because now my whole section in the middle is even, right? This is where we go back to if the person has a part, right? This person come in or this person wants to get a part, this is where I would come in. This person has a hard part. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use my guide and I'm going to leave it even, okay? I'm not gonna angle this, okay? I come in and I even the part and even at the side, okay? Why? Because I need this here to be long enough so that it wants to come over. If I come in, instead of doing that horizontal and I come in and I go like this, when I try to part it, it's gonna keep pushing back because now it doesn't have that weight that it needs to be able to push to the other side, okay? You gotta remember, we control hair by what? By weight. And what does weight equal in hair? Length, right? The more length on the hair, the more weight it has, right? If I go short on the hair, what happens to the hair? You create volume, right? And volume is lifts, it's not heavy. So we eliminate weight by removing length, right? When we do uh, thinning, right? What are we doing to the thinning? Why is it called thinning? You're eliminating weight. You're eliminating weight. How are we eliminating weight? By shortening the hair. By shortening in some of the hair, right? So we are controlling the weight by controlling the length. And the way we control direction of the hair is by what? Over, over direction. How do we control direction of the hair? I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say this mannequin, right? It has a bob. And the person's like, you know what? I want my hair to naturally go out. Like I wanna be able to shower, blow dry it, and I want my hair to always be flaring out. You cut it, shut it, uh, shut it to the top, right? You have to cut it to the top. No, isn't you know, that the, the isn't that the, weight, the weaving technique? No. You know how we control it? By controlling weight, <laughs> by controlling length, right? So what's gonna happen, let's say this person has long hair, right? And they want their hair to naturally go out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the hair and I'm gonna turn it to the outside and I'm gonna cut the hair this way. Because what's gonna happen is that by me turning the hair outwards and cutting it, I'm already get eliminating some of the hair on the outside, it's gonna be shorter than the inside. Why? Because the hair on the inside has to travel longer to go out. The hair on the end outside is gonna travel shorter to come out. So that means that the hair on the outside is gonna be shorter, the hair on the inside is gonna be longer, and that's gonna to wanna to make the hair naturally push out. You know, remember those bobs when they come in and the bob goes to the insides? Naturally, the bob, the hair keeps going to the inside. How do I create that? Same thing, right? I'm gonna get the hair, I'm gonna twist it towards the inside, and I'm gonna cut on the inside. Once I get that hair, I pull the hair down, and I twist it in, and I cut the hair on the inside, I'm cutting the inside of the hair shorter than the outside of the hair, so the outside of the hair is gonna wanna push it in naturally, okay? So I control the direction of the hair by the length of the weight, okay? That's really important for you guys to always remember. You control what you want the hair naturally to go. You know, Sonia's hair right now is perfect length. And she comes over here right now and she tells me like, you know what, Omar, I want my hair to naturally go outwards. I get all her hair and I go outwards and I cut and I guarantee you her hair will naturally want to go out. Let me see. Can I see that? <laughs> you know, she tells me, she's like, you know what? I hate that my hair goes out. I want my hair to push in because I like the flatness of it. Okay, I get her hair. I go towards the inside and I cut it facing towards the inside. What's going to be? Now the hair is going to be shorter on the inside. And we're talking about almost nothing, but it makes a difference in hair. You know, almost nothing. Is that considered a <coughs> of over direction? Uh, in a way, 
you know? Like directed yeah. Or, or we direct it. I feel that that term, we use it more when we're doing like a drastic change, you know? Like from here on yeah, when we're doing something where it's like we want to keep something from very long to very short, you know? Okay. Um, this one's more creating direction of the hair. That's what we're doing. It's still directing. You know? Yeah, we're still directing the hair. What about if somebody wants the hair to go just naturally straight down? Right. Then we do a blanc cut, right? We get the hair, we go straight down, we cut it, and the hair's gonna wanna naturally go down. I get that same hair, I pull it out, I cut it, and the hair naturally goes out. I get that same hair, I put it to the inside, I do an inside cut, and the hair's gonna naturally curve in. What about natural? Natural would be straight down. Oh, you know, yeah. Cause it's not going out or in. No. All right, so that's that's just something that you guys got to remember. You know, we control hair by the weight, we control it by the amount, we control it by the direction of it. So here we need the weight on the part for the hair to go this way. So we need to leave it longer than we're gonna do this side. Okay. How much longer? I that usually just keep that horizontal level. So like, let's say this is my part right here. I'm gonna come in right here, that middle section, my guide is at zero. I'm gonna keep that zero right next to the line. So I'm not gonna angle my fingers this way. Because once I angle my fingers this way, I'm losing length, I'm losing weight, and I'm losing control. Yeah. Because you pre part it. As in? As in like already just. Oh yeah, well I mean, if they're gonna have a part, that's the first thing you do. Oh. When somebody comes in and they have a comb over and they have a part, that's the first thing we do. We wet the hair a little bit and we divide where the part is at because we want to make sure that we don't cut into it, that we don't mess it up. You know, we want to sub we want to section that part out right away. Anyways, yeah, as soon as you start. Okay. okay. All right. So here, can we get the AC on, Tony? Yeah. Let me wet it again. Okay, so we got that whole middle section and we did our, our section right here in the middle. Everything here is horizontal. Everything here in the middle is even. So now we're gonna grab that section and we're gonna move on to the side. I'm still bringing the hair up at what direction? Zero. Or 90. 90. 90, the hair always goes up in the 90. My finger placement is what changes, okay? The hair stays at a 90, always, okay? So now I'm gonna grab, because what I wanna do is I wanna grab some of this, which is my what? My guide, right? This is my guide in the middle. So now I'm gonna grab some of that guide and use it in this middle section in the crown area to create my what? A 90. The hair's gonna be at 90, but my finger's gonna be what? 40. 45, okay? So that means I gotta come in and I'm gonna be doing <coughs> a 45 right here, okay? I can see where my night, where my um, horizontal guide is at, so I want to make sure I always see that, right? I can see a little section from it, so I want to make sure that I always follow my section from the top, and I'm gonna be cutting at a 45, and I'm gonna do that throughout the whole crown area. And what this is doing is this is little by little going from a zero to a 45 to a 90 going from long to shorter to short, okay? So I came in right here at zero. This is my 45. This is my 45. And I'm gonna follow it around, okay? I'm doing the same thing. I'm following it around. I brought my zero down to here and I'm doing my 45 around the head and the crown area. So the crown area, 45 all the way this way. Now, somebody in the morning asked me because they were cutting my hair and they were like, you know what, Omar? I always struggle with this side because this side, obviously your fingers are thinner here. So it's easy for you to cut this side. They're like, but when I get to this side, I struggle a lot, you know, because if I want to keep it like this, I feel like I have to be like this to be able to get to it, right? So everybody's like, she tells me like, I struggle. How do you do it? And I tell them my main thing is I make the client turn this way and that makes a huge difference, you know? Like, I'll give you an example. Let's say the Victor, right? I'm cutting Victor's hair. I'm working this way. This side is very easy, very comfortable for me to cut. 
all the way till I get here. Once I get here, you know, Victor's sitting in a chair. Put your leg this way. Is that your barber chair? <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna be like this <laughs> on top oh. of Victor to cut this side, right? It so doesn't make slide. sense. I'm not gonna sit in this lab to cut the side. What I'm gonna do, <laughs> you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell, oh, can you turn, can you turn this way? Once Victor turns this way, it's easy for me to follow this way. You know, it makes a big difference. I don't have to, if Victor is like this, and a lot of barbers feel like I can't make my head, client's head turn, like it's impossible. It's not, it's not that hard to do, you know? But there's a lot of barbers that when they're doing the lineup or when they're doing that cut, they're gonna be like this. They're gonna be like this, you know? And it's all twisted, your back hurts, your hands hurt, your hands are like shaking because you're like, it's uncomfortable, you know? So it's not gonna kill them to be like, oh, can you turn a little bit this way? Is that as accurate, huh? Me too, bro. I'm not really that comfortable with that angle. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you can cut with both hands, yes. But then you got to remember, scissors are right-handed or left-handed. So it makes a big difference on how they cut. If I get this one, I turn it to my other hand, then they don't cut no more. What they do is they actually bend the hair more than they cut it. Right, Karen? Karen's left-handed. Yeah, you're left-handed. You should use uh, left-handed shears. Do you have them? She was telling me when we went to... Uh, yeah, it makes a big difference. You know, if you learn how to cut with both hands, it's gonna help you out a lot. But the scissors are made in two different directions, so you have to get left handed shears. Scissors that like don't have, um, you know, how they're like offset. What about the ones that are? They're always gonna be either right handed or left handed, though, because what happens is it's mostly based on the sharpness of the blade. Because you got to remember, one, this one right here is supposed to be your steel blade. This is your cutting blade. So whenever you pick up the hair. That's why when you're doing the comb over, the scissors over comb, remember we're doing this, right? And this one, this one is your moving blade. This is the one that's gonna be cutting the hair. So when you're doing the scissor cutting, you're doing the same thing. You're still using that cutting blade to cut against the other one. You know? So that's gonna make a big difference. So what I'll do is again, I do the zero, 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 then I come in and I do a 45, 45, 45. I'm connecting at the same time to my zero. I wanna make sure that Anytime I do the 45, I see where my connection is on the top, okay? I'm gonna work that all the way around here to the crown area at a 45, at a 45. If I don't see my guy from the top, I'm not gonna cut. I need to see it. You see that right there, that's my guide. So I gotta see my guide at all times. So you're not doing the, um, the part cut? No, I'm not gonna do the part cut. Cause the part cut in reality is just leaving it. You know, like I'm just doing zero, zero and leaving the part. Okay, and what about, did they have like uh, um, cowlicks in the back or something? Um, one of the things that I like to do, for example, you know, that's, that, that's an important thing too. Let's say this person has a colic in the back, right? And if I go too short, it's gonna make it spend, uh, spike up. What I like to do is honestly, I direct my finger length to create a little bit more length, but I want it to blend in still because if I just do like a disconnected just because it's long, then they're gonna see it. Because remember, when something is not connected, it creates a layer, it creates a line. So I don't want no line. So what I would do is I would actually come in, let's say when I'm doing my, my, my uh, Mohawk guy from the beginning, I would come in, do my Mohawk guy, do my Mohawk guy, and here I would kind of like bend my fingers up a little bit. Why? Because now I can create a little bit of a length on the top and the back, but I'm still, you know, gradual blending out, you know? So I'll leave the back a little bit longer. Why? Because it goes back to what we were just talking about. The way I'm gonna be able to create and create um, kind of like direction or control is by length. I need length to be able to get that colic down, right? So if I need length, then I need to learn how to go from here to extend my fingers up at a 45 in the back and create a little bit more length in the back so they can comb it down a little bit easier. Okay? So, zero, 45, went all around, and now, whether you're doing a fade, or you're doing a two, or you're doing a one, regardless, this is gonna be your shortest section. Here, I wanna make sure that I come in as close as possible to the scalp and create a 90 degree cut, right? 
my finger placement is straight 90 degree angle. I gotta see where my 45 was on the top, right? I need a little bit of that section because I need to connect it to something. So I'm gonna come in, I see where the 45 was on the top and I'm going to connect it. And I'm gonna follow that throughout the side of the head. This is as short, as close as possible to the scalp, okay? I'm not pulling away. I'm not, unless you're doing like a long scissor cut. Like if they want it super long in the side, then of course you're gonna give yourself more space. Other than that, everything else is gonna be as close as possible to the scalp at a 90 degree angle, okay? I'm going here and I'm putting my finger I'm touching, literally touching the scalp of the person. I'm leaving my fingers at a 90 degree angle and I'm connecting to where my 45 angle is at, right here in the top. Okay, and I'm gonna do that all around. Okay, so now we have a haircut where he has a zero, a 45, and then created a 90, right? Down here, well, obviously you're gonna either do a fade or you're gonna put a two or you're gonna put a three. If they don't want a number and they're like, I want a scissor cut all around, then you keep doing the same thing. We're gonna come in with the 90 and we're gonna put in our fingers as close as possible. And we're gonna start off from the bottom. Okay. I tell people, even 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 if I get really close, honestly, like at the end, I like to always come in with my trimmers and just kind of like tell them, I, cause I've had clients where they're like, oh, you know what? I want a full scissor cut. Like I don't want no machines on the side. I don't want this. Like, okay, cool. I do my full scissor cut as close as I can with my shears. And then I always come back and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up around the ears. Then at that point, what I'll do is I'll get my machine At that point, what I like to do is I'll get my machine and I'll come in and just angle my comb out as much as possible, but be able to clean up around here. Because that honestly, nothing is gonna give you your finger placement, your scissor placement. It's not gonna give you that, that sharp blend out as good as your clipper will on the on just that bottom part. You know, you wanna come in and just kind of like angle it out and connect it. And that's how you're gonna be able to get that nice, you know, bend from really short to the longer Gradation. section on the top. You know? Gradation. Yeah. Okay. And that's how we would do a full scissor cut on somebody. Zero, 45, 90, come in as close as possible in that side, get your comb at the end, bring it out, and then just trim that little hair in the bottom. Because to get in here really close tight, especially I feel like this back area, because we have that dip, it's really hard to get your scissors in there sometimes, you know? So what I like to do is just come in, do my full scissor cut up to here, and then just get your comb at the bottom, and then boom, you know, knock it down in the bottom. You know? It's gonna be easy, it's not gonna make a difference, because the thing about it too, you gotta understand is that that hair is so short, that no matter what, it's gonna spike out. Even if you do the scissor cut, it's so short that it wants to like stand up a little bit. You know, so you're better off just with the comb cleaning out that bottom part. Okay. You got a question? Would you recommend that on a, in a mullet? Just like on a long hair mullet? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I mean, again, you know, I feel like with the scissor cuts, you're able to really control a lot of it. You know, I feel like with uh, um, all those all those new haircuts, the mullets, you know, the the crop tops, like all those haircuts are done by knowing how to use scissor work. You know, if you don't know how to use scissors, you're not gonna be able to create all those stuff. You know, that you need the scissors. You know, you need the scissors to be able to create texture. You need the scissors to be able to create, you know, uh, different length for, for you to be able to go from long to really short to really long, you know? So, so, one, so one of the things that I always tell people, you gotta remember, the way you're gonna be able to create any haircut is by controlling the haircut. It's like they say, uh, divide and conquer, right? That makes a lot of sense when you're cutting hair. If I'm gonna cut, let's say even your hair, 
and right your hair is really long and you're like you know what i just want to trim i'm not going to just start picking up your hair because it's going to go all over the place you know it's a lot of hair it's long i need to get your hair and section it i need to divide it you know once i divide the hair i can conquer it you know with the mullet it's the same thing you know that this is long this is short this is long so what am i going to do i'm going to get that front section i'm going to divide it to the front i'm going to get that middle section and create a middle section and i'm going to get that back section where i want my mullet to start and divide it and create another section so now i know that hey here i can come in and cut it as short as i want to i know that from here i need to connect this to this one this is going to be really short so now i'm going to go from very long to really short to really long again but I know my separations and I know where I'm gonna need to connect it. So, so something like that, you do what, like 45, 45 to 90 to what? To the top? Yeah. The top, I would go like horizontal, same thing, 90. Okay. But what I would do is I would do the same thing that we're talking about, the colleagues in the back. Mm -hmm. I wanna leave, let's say the front. I mean, honestly, I, I feel like it just depends on the type of uh, mullet that you're doing as well. Some people like the front a little bit longer. Some people like it a lot shorter, you know? Like there are haircuts, there are mullets where they do kind of like a crop top style on the front, you know? So for that, we're gonna keep the length really short on the top and then just gradually get long. You know, if they want the mullet where it's the front is longer, so they want it like, like for example, that Joe Dirt mullet, right? That Joe Dirt mullet was very long, like a pompadour style on the front. And then oh, yeah. he had it really short, <laughs> and then he had that mullet in the back. So for that type of Joe haircut, dirt. like if we want that Joe Dirt mullet, where he has that pump in the front, I'm gonna get the front, and I'm gonna 45 it, so that I can keep a lot of length, go really short, really short, really short, and then 45 it again, you know? So you start out with a 45, horizontal, 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 45 it again. Cause now you're gonna create length, short length you know so you have to really know the the angle of the hair is still going to stay the same i'm still going to cut it at 90 but i'm going to be playing with the angle of the finger placement and that's the one that's going to give you length shortness length okay yes okay so that's how we would do a, a like a regular scissor cut right now let's say i'm done with this scissor cut what do i have to do now what I gotta do? Cross check, right? Why do I have to cross check? How? Like where we get the longest from? Why do I have to cross check? This way. The this. What do you mean by this? Why would I have different lengths? If I use a guide, and, if I use a guide and I created a guide and I follow that guide, why yeah, would I have different lengths? You gotta make sure that the whole head is uh, even, so you kind of over direct the hair a little bit like on the sides. It's like I think most of you guys are semi there, but not really. <laughs> okay, you gotta remember, I'm cutting like this, right? I'm cutting like this, and I'm following a guide and I'm doing as best as I can. But you gotta remember, every section that I'm cutting, it means I'm getting the hair and I'm pushing it in. Yeah. And I'm cutting in the middle. When the hair opens up again, every little section, what's gonna happen? It's gonna create a little wave pattern, right? Once this hair dries up, and I can dry it up for you right now, you're gonna see lines. And those lines are gonna be from every section that I cut going this way. Because again, every section it was pushed into the middle and eventually they open up and they create u-shapes right so now i have to come in what is called cross check i have to come this way because i cut this way and i'm gonna pick up the hair and i'm gonna look you guys see that right there there's one right here there's one right here those little patterns are going to be created because you're cutting in sections going this way now you need to come and pick up the hair and look for the little corners because these little corners once they get long and the hair expands back again it's going to be more noticeable okay 
So this is why you do what is called cross check. You're looking for those little corners, okay? So what I'll do is I'll come back, because again, if I, right now it looks good, I can't really see them. Once the hair dries up, that's when they become noticeable. If the hair dries up at home, let's say you right after this, I didn't even let it dry, and I put on some gel, the client went home, took a shower, dried his hair, he starts seeing lines on his hair, you know? So you wanna make sure that you come back and you do what is called cross check. I wanna make sure that when this client goes home, he doesn't have any lines. Could you also do that dry skin? You can. That's when usually, that's what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. You see this corner right here? Mm -hmm. These are the corners that I created as, as I was going to the side. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. When we're eliminating those lines, once it's dry, to create that. Look. You see that corner right there? Mm -hmm. That corner, will, once the hair dries, mm -hmm. this corner is going to become super noticeable. Okay? Yeah. So that's why we do cross check to eliminate those corners. Okay. Once I do my cross check, now when the hair dries, it should be nice and straight. See? We don't have no more waves. We don't have no more waves. Okay. Okay, so I cross-checked it. I did my 90, I did my 45, I did my horizontal. What else do I gotta do? You come in and you outline it, right? You come in and you clean it up, you do the sideburn, you do the back, and you detail it, and you do clean it, right? Okay, so that's pretty much it for that one. I do wanna cover something else since I'm in the topic right now. I want you guys to understand the difference between these two. What is this called? Thinning shears. Thinning shears. Thinning shears, right? What are these called? Texturizing. Texturizing shears, right? Why are they texturizing? It takes out more chunks, right? So with this one, what do I create? When I thin out hair, what am I creating? Less hair. Um, more volume. Less volume? No. It's enough the hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking away hair. I'm thinning it out. Less weight. Less weight. I'm going to create more what? Volume. You create control. When the person says, man, my hair is really thick, you know, I can't get it to slick down. What do we do? We thin it out a little bit. Why? Because when we're removing bulk and we're removing weight, he's gonna be able to have more control, right? So with thin and shears, you're creating control, okay? With texturizing shears, we're creating what? Texture. Texture, texture also known as an effect, right? They want the hair to be spiky, they want it to be, you know, texture, they wanna see it all over the place, you know, they want that, uh, the, what do you call it again? The what we're talking about? Uh, no, that style, um, the crop top, you know? They want the crop top, they want texture. That's when we use texturizing shears. Because texturizing shears remove more hair and create like this crazy pattern to it, you know? So texturizing shears create an effect. Thinning shears are supposed to be for creating control. Okay? Big difference. Quick question on the thinning shears. Yes. So let's say, let's say for example, Theo, if he wants to comb it to the side, but it's so thick, would you thin the inside, like under whatever you're gonna put over, or do you thin the whole thing out? You can thin out from the whole hair, but you gotta remember, when you're using thinning shears or texturizing shears, it's always gonna be never past that middle section of the hair. You always wanna leave it towards the ends of the hair. So for example, let's say I'm, I'm thinning out this hair because this hair keeps spiking up and I wanna create control on this. I'm gonna get my thinning shears and I'm gonna get it only on the edges on the outside. I'm never gonna come in and do it down here. Once I cut this down here, it creates the hair so short that they spike out, you know? So now you're not gonna have, now it's a mess. Now it's the hair's gonna be spiking out everywhere. It doesn't have enough length to fall and I lost what I wanted. 
you know. If this person wants control, I commence and I thin out the box, that back part of it. And with that, it's gonna be able to lay over a lot easier, you know. So, like let's say Theo does want to do a comb over and the hair is very heavy. You can come in and let's say thin out or thin out that bottom section so that the top has more room to lay over. Because that's what's happening at the end is that you're getting that comb over to the side. Let's say you're pushing the hair this way, but if there's already a lot of hair here, it's gonna wanna push up. So yeah, I can come in and thin out a little bit of here so that this hair has enough space to fall over. You know, So that's why, and that's kind of like a really important part because you have to eventually learn how to just manipulate the hair, you know? You have to manipulate it. You have to know what you're doing. You have to really think about it. You know, like you're saying, like that comment didn't come out of just nowhere. You thought about it, Yeah. you know? You thought about it. You thought about her hair. You thought about, okay, can I thin out this bottom section so that the top will have enough space and length to be able to fall over, you know? That's the kind of thinking that gets you going. You have to think like that. You have to think outside the box. You have to think about, okay, what would happen if I were to do this? You know? You have to learn the basics of stuff. You, you know, today, um, I give you guys a lot of information. Control weight, control length, control direction of the hair. If I cut to the outside, it makes this. If I cut to the inside, it makes this. If I cut straight, this is what happens. The top of the section, I gotta create that mohawk. I gotta even it out. I gotta create that into a 45 and then to a 90 so that I can connect it. You know, I gotta make sure that if I'm cutting this side and I'm having a hard time, turn that person's head a little bit to the side and work a lot more comfortable. You know, those are all things that you have to little by little, you know, put into use. You know, and like his question, that mean to me, that means that he was thinking about it. You know? And that's a very important step, is to be able to use a lot of like outside thinking to create stuff, you know? I always tell people, all these people that are, you know, big in the industry, that are big influencers, that are big, because they think outside the box. They're not doing just fades, you know? They're not doing just a medium fade. You know, they're thinking outside the box. You know, all these people that are huge, that are working with Babyliss, that are working, you know, they're thinking outside the box. Rob the Original, every week comes out with a different way to show his art. You know, he's not just sitting there doing design after design after design after design, you know? Like, he was there doing a design, saw the hair on the floor, and he's all like, damn, I could do art on the floor, you know? One day, he was probably eating tacos, put some salt in his tacos, like, damn, I can use this salt to create an art, you know? One day, he probably got mad, smashed on the window, and like, oh man, I can create, have you guys seen that one where he smashes on the windows and he creates pieces of art now, you know? Like, you know, it's just, it's that outside thinking, you know, that's gonna get you to that next level. There's a lot of good barbers, a lot, thousands. The way you're gonna get out, the way you're gonna elevate in this industry is by thinking outside the box, you know? By thinking about, okay, what can we do next? Somebody has to think about the mullet to be able to bring it back, you know? Like I tell people all the time, like, you know, there's this guy that, the one that we're talking about all the time, is this famous guy that he, um, he was one of the first persons that ever said, you know what, I wanna get good at putting wigs on people, you know? That never was part of barbering. I mean, it was officially, you know, we could do it, but nobody ever did it, you know? It wasn't known in the industry. And it took one person to say, I'm gonna get good at this. I wanna get so good that you can get a badass fade, and get a wig, and nobody will tell, you know? He did it, became famous, now he's charging, I think it's like $1,000 per ticket to go to his class. They're sold out everywhere. I just got it, I'll tell you, because I follow him and you know, they, he sends out emails. He just sent an email not that long ago that he was gonna do a class in Vegas. I was like $1,500 for a, the one day ticket, you know? And they're sold out. But it was just that one mentality that he had and said, nobody else is doing this. I'm gonna <coughs> take the time. I'm gonna dedicate myself to this and I'm gonna perfect this art, you know? I'll find out his Instagram. Anybody remember his Instagram? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll remember his Instagram right now. But he has an Instagram, and his Instagram, when I first started following him and I started seeing what he was doing, you know, he had a little bit of followers. Right now he has like 150,000, 200,000, like, I don't know. He's big in the industry, you know? 
So, you know, that's that kind of thinking that will get you to another level. You know, that I'm just going to do fade after fade after fade after fade. That's perfect. That's good if that's what you want. You know, there's people, I'll tell people all the time, like, we need a little bit of everything in this world. You know, there's people that are just super happy and excited to their, their whole life just cut hair. You know, there's people that are not. You know, I tell people like me, when I started cutting hair, I got to a point where I was like, I need to be an educator. I love teaching. You know, that was my passion. That was what I wanted to do. But I wanted to take it to another level. It took a lot of work, you know. Mm-hmm. Today in the morning, I was talking to one of the students and um, they, well, the guy that was cutting my hair. And he's like, why did you want to get into, um, into the academy? What made you want to open the academy? And I was like, honestly, I've always been into the educational part, you know. But I knew that I knew I knew that I had to be good at every type of haircut, scissor cut, and everything else before I can get into that. And it wasn't an overnight thing, you know. Like I don't know if you guys seen, but um, I posted the other school not that long ago. You know, I posted a video, kind of like a little preview of how it was looking and what we we're doing. I got like seven messages saying like, "Hey Omar, let me uh, help me open up a school." You know. There are people that have never done anything in the educational side, you know, and I'm and my thing is like I will help you if you put the effort into it, you know. I tell people all the time like before I opened up my school, I was an instructor for like two three years. I became a supervisor instructor for another two three years. I partnered up with somebody to open up the barber section and create a whole curriculum on my own because they didn't have a barber section, and that was another five years. So mm-hmm. it took me almost ten years of being in the education system before I decided to open up Master Academy. You know, it wasn't an overnight thing. You have to learn the ins and outs of it before <coughs> you decide to do anything else. You know, if you want to open a school, that's fine. Become an instructor first. You, know, you can't be an owner if you don't know how to teach. You know, Sonia calls in, Karen calls in, Gus calls in. I come in here and I keep going. You know, if I don't know how to teach, they call in, I'm done. You know, and I'm telling you because the school that I was at before, where I partnered up with them, that's what it was. You know, there are owners, but they're not cosmetologists or barbers. So when the teacher would call in, all right, guys, class is canceled today. No points, no credits. Everybody go home. You know, with us, you know, they all three of them call in, which I hope they don't. You know, <laughs> all three of them call in. Find we, out we, we are going to vacate. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be here. We are Roxanne. Like, you know, I love having responsible instructors. I love depending on them, but I'm not gonna depend my life or my business on somebody else. Yeah. You know? Like, I need to be here. I need to make sure that, you know, people tell me all the time, like, dude, they're like, Omar, like, you already have the teacher, you already, why are you still there? Well, number one, because I love teaching, you know? Number two, because this is my business, you know? If you have a business, take care of it. You know? Like, that's, that's, that's bottom line, you know? You have a shop, just because you're the owner doesn't mean you don't have to be there. You gotta be there. You know? Like, it, it takes a lot. You know? Um, Alright, so, I don't want to keep going to this. It's a whole different story. <laughs> that's a different story. Uh, that's a different, different talk. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I hope that you guys, you know, understood what we were talking about here with the scissor cutting, the difference between the shears, uh, you know, how to create a guide. These are basic stuff that you guys really need to make sure you learn. You know? Any questions based on this? No? 04590, connect it, connect everything, go around, make the person turn, make that off, put it into practice. I had a question. Yeah. Um, could you turn them around? Instead of having them turn around, turn It's the same thing, though. Yeah, they're still going to be like this. Because you got to remember, yeah. yeah. I mean, the chair itself yeah, yeah. turns with them. Yeah. You know, it's not like their so head turns turn without the chair. Makes sense. <laughs> I mean, what bothers you when, when to follow it around, what bothers you is not so much the head, it's the chair, you know, because like, for example, if I'm cutting, if I'm cutting him, you know, whether I turn him around.